Okay, everyone, welcome back to the book boat. Um, I'm your host, Jocelyn, and I'm Alejandra. And this is our second uh, recording of our podcast, which we are very excited. And this week is going to be kind of a very fun one for us. Um, we're going to be talking about our first weeks of school, which is quickly approaching for all of us. Yes. And, yes, and I know that there's a lot of uncertainty, whether it's going to be fully online or if it's going to be a hybrid method. And I know a lot of districts are now coming out saying that they are going to be online. Um, so it's kind of leaving a little, all of us a little bit kind of yeah. worried yeah <laughs> I'm like nervous I'm like how am I gonna do my read alouds online but um we gotta get them done somehow yeah no I'm the exact same way um I know that when we went to just teaching last the end of last school year I was doing a lot of read alouds and it's it's different because with like laptops or being on a computer kids can just kind of like zone out yeah. and then go play games and so it's like a whole different ball game of kind of trying to keep them it is up. Yeah, engaged. I'm kind of curious when you did your, this is kind of off topic, but it might be helpful for read alouds. When you were doing them, were you like, uh, kind of, because we're also, uh, if you're listening to us on just audio, we are recording this as well so I can see Jocelyn because we're not together in the same room. Um, I'm curious, did you just like have your book and hold it up to them or how are your read alouds? I did it two ways. So the district that I was student teaching at let me borrow their ladybug, which is like kind of like the document camera. Uh -huh. um, so the first time I did a read aloud, I wanted my face to be shown. Yeah. Um, so I did one like this. Okay. And so it's like, but then the kids can't really like see the pictures as much. Yeah. So then so the second different parts. Yeah. And then the second time I did it with just the document camera and held the book kind of underneath it, and they were able to see the picture completely in their screen um but then there was a problem with that that is as more students were on the call the screen would sometimes freeze and so then by the time that i turn it like they'd only get to see the picture for like maybe two seconds so okay i mean both have their pros and cons yeah um i was just thinking because i actually did a training not that long ago um that was about like reading and stuff like that and they used an app that's, I think, a part of an extension of Google, and it's called Jamboard. I don't know if you've heard of it. This is not an advertisement, by the way. I really yeah. sound like I'm advertising stuff when I'm like, um, but I really liked it because I think what they did was they would like scan pictures and put it on the Jamboard. And then I'm assuming that then they could either like have the kid read it at home, or uh, I'm trying to find out ways where I would show my iPad on the Zoom as I can see my face too. So I'm sharing it that way. Yeah around because read alouds are one of my favorites especially first week read alouds and I don't want that to be taken away so I'm trying to find uh, a good way to do a read aloud but I really like Jamboard so far and I like it because I could actually write on like the pages Ooh, okay um, so it's kind of nice because like as we're reading like we can start making notes um, on the actual book okay I need to remember that because I am teaching ELA so I guess I will. There's gonna be a lot of read alouds and a lot of reading material, so that's a good one to remember. Thanks, Alejandra. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's kind of off topic, but oh no, no, I love it. Um. So I guess this week is what we would be reading to our students the first week of school, which is a very exciting time because kids are nervous, you're nervous, it's a whole new group of students, and so we you just want to kind of get them started with kind of almost like a feeling of what your classroom is going to be like it's it's almost like presenting like I was a I did theater for four years so it's almost like presenting the stage like setting up the energy for the year and so I think like these reads are very crude not not as crucial as other reads but they do kind of set the foundation of like almost a little bit of what your year is going to look like yeah and it's almost kind of nice because I I feel like we're kind of all on our best behavior that first week of school so it's like Probably the read alouds are going to pay them, I mean, I don't want to say the most attention to, but it's going to be the quietest, so I feel like it should definitely be really engaging, and um, just making sure you plan it out nicely so you're able to get feedback from the kids, because everyone's yeah. nervous, so I don't know. They're going to have to answer, I'm going to be nervous, that no one's going to want to answer, and then we're just going to be staring at each other. Exactly, so I get it. Um, so I guess, like, the first one, we, we kind of both have, like, this page where we kind of put books on and I we kind of had a little like zoom meeting before this about what books we wanted and there's one that we both wanted to agree that we are definitely going to read it's, it's a must it's a must and I know that it's it may not be as diverse as I know that we were kind of talking about it because like a lot of the books that we're reading are like reading are featuring characters who um are usually from
from like minorities or like just cultures that are really re- under that are underrepresented. So we wanted to start including more of those books um, in our classroom. And so this one isn't as much, um, but it's it's a classic, and we just really love it. So it's called First Day Jitters by Julie Dans Dansberg. I this love one, it. I know this one was actually a gift from my mentor teachers. Oh really? Day, yeah. The first day I ever met them, they gave me this, and then they gave me Last Day. Uh, Last Day Blues, I think. Yes, yes. I, I was gifted that one too. I was gonna ask you, um, when do you remember when you first read First Day Jitters? It was last year. Yeah, that was my first time, and I know that they handed it to me, and then the next day we started school, and so I, I like looked at it. I was like, oh, cool, it's like really cute, but I didn't read it, and so they told me they're like, hey, like this is your first day student teaching. We're just gonna dive you right in. Like you get to do the read aloud for the year or the first read aloud. And no I did, no pressure, I know. And I did. And as I was reading it, this was such a cute story because halfway, like it's not until like the end of the book that you realize that the new student, sorry, spoiler. I was gonna say, <laughs> do we want to, I mean, I don't, there's a big surprise at the yeah, end. Yeah, okay. Um, it's, the, it's from the perspective of a teacher which yeah. I thought was super cute because I remember when I read this to my students, did you read this? Uh, so it's kind of funny. I asked what, how you started or when you first found out the book because I feel like mine's kind of interesting where it was my first year teaching as well. Um, I can't remember where I got, I must have been like um, on the end cap at Target, like those like first new school year section. Um, and I picked it up and I think I did the same thing where I kind of not I'm not promoting this but I read it to the students my first time too um and then I was like man like this is a good book like I'm a first year I was a first year teacher like I was doubting myself and I found out it was actually part of our curriculum so I felt so proud I was like wow I did something great um but yes I, I read it my first year I loved it and like the more I read it the more like activities I feel like we could do with it yes um which is something that I think, Jocelyn, I mean, we haven't totally talked about, but we definitely want to mention, like, some activities that you can do um, with your students, but I also, um, oh, man, I'm like, okay, I didn't tell you this beforehand, but I was talking to my brother, uh-huh. and he's like, this is such a great idea, like, even for parents, and I was like, I mean, I guess it is, like, I'm not a parent, but I feel like, obviously, we'd love to reach parents and have them read to their student, I mean, to their kids. Yeah. Um, now if we're going to do the distance learning they're going to be with them a bigger amount of time and maybe they're going to be the ones who read this to them yeah but I, I love I love the book um, yes. a lot of activities so even parents if you're listening maybe you can if you want to do some of these activities with mm-hmm. your student, especially this one um sorry I'm gonna hopefully jump a little bit ahead where like this is such a good book for like almost predicting um, and trying to like figure out what's happening because the first time I read it, I was totally like, I was not expecting that ending at all. Yeah, yeah. no, exactly. I wasn't expecting it. And then I remember like the moment when that ending happened, my students looked at me and they were like, what? And then it was like, they were like, oh, cause they never saw it coming either. Yeah. Um, but then you we were talking about how we, all the activities we can do just to kind of like recall on the activities we did we then like read the story and then we spent the next two weeks um doing a writing piece so it was first day jitters and the students got to talk about how they felt on their first day whether they were nervous excited and everything and one it was a really good like easy kind of topic for students to write about two we use it use it as a way to kind of also sense the writing level that the students were coming into our classroom as well to kind of like assess um just to know what they have retained over the summer so it was a really fun activity and then we had like pictures that they got to draw with it and so then we had that on the back to school night yeah um, this the, they were hanging up on the wall and the parents got to see and they got to read like how their student how their child felt the first day so that was really fun yeah yeah I, I love it and then I was thinking um it'd be nice to like because I've seen um like charts where students like it'll say like different feelings and students Mm -hmm. will put up sticky notes and I think it's a good way to kind of introduce it and I almost love the fact that um like we were saying it's from the teacher's perspective and you kind of get to get a feel of how like a teacher might be feeling yeah students look at us and they just think we're super confident but they don't realize that I'm nervous that I don't know it's not going to go well either and I think it's good that they see that we're human as well and we get nervous just like they're nervous and it's exciting Mm -hmm. and a lot of feelings going around. Yeah. 
Yeah, no. So all around, one of our favorite books. Definitely recommend that you at least yes. give it a try one one of these years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we are we good diving into our own? Yeah. Okay. Am I going first? Yes, you can go first. Okay. Um, so when we were thinking about this topic, I was like, man, there's so many books that I want to do, and like this is a tough choice. Um, so I actually kind of text the two co-workers and I was like what books are you guys gonna read on your first day um and then they mentioned this book and I was like why like I have this book why didn't I think about it um and I probably didn't mention but I'm actually a bilingual teacher so I teach both in Spanish and English and this book is in Spanish and English um so I was really excited about that and it's called The Day You Begin by Jack Declan Woodson and it's illustrated by Rafael Lopez and it's also in Spanish, El Día en Que Descubres Quien Eres. So I, I love that I have the choice of doing it in Spanish or English. Um, and just like a quick idea about what this book is about. Um, like on the, on the inside, it had this sentence that said, like when you reach out and begin to share our story, others will be happy to meet us halfway. Um, and I just love that because the story, I think, I don't know if it's, on their first day of school too, but they're kind of talking about what they did over the summer and all of these students are sharing um, things that they did. Um, and there's this little girl who, um, a lot of her peers kind of traveled and she didn't get to travel or like, I guess do fun things. Um, she kind of stayed home and I loved it because she was reading and she kind of, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but she, kind of travels through the books in a way, which is something that I talked about in the first episode where um, she wasn't physically going to these places, but as she was reading, you know, she's kind of imagining these places in her mind. Um, and I think it's a good book because it's talking about how we're different as in like, she didn't get to do this. Um, they talk about a little boy who I think is from a different country. So the way he's speaking is a little bit different. Um, so I thought it was a cute story to just talk about like what makes you unique and I yes. think um I don't know if I'd read it right away on the first day but definitely that first week where they start to get a little bit more comfortable because I want them to come up with things that make them special um you know what's something that is unique that they feel about themselves like she talks about maybe the color of her skin is different or um how curly her hair is um and I thought it was a cute book and I love the fact that it's in Spanish and English um and then for activities that I was thinking about so I like the idea of like what makes you unique so maybe making um I don't know like a self-portrait and then writing like a sentence that goes along with it would be really nice or um uh why the books are so special for the main character and just talking about the importance of books like I was mentioning she kind of travels through the books instead of getting to travel like her peers um, and then for a more, I guess, academic approach would be, there's a lot of common and proper nouns in this story. So I think it'd be a nice way to like refresh it, especially in the beginning of the year, just talking yeah. about what nouns are um, okay. and then going back and rereading it and seeing, um, pulling those words out. Okay. Um, I kind of want to bring it back to where you're talking about this activity of what makes you unique. Yeah. I think that is a really great one because when I think of, like, now looking back on and reflecting on my time being in school, one of the main things that teachers made us do is, what did you do over the summer? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was in teaching that I kind of realized, like, not every child has the opportunity to go travel or do anything over the summer. Like, some, some children, like, stay at home. And so I think it always presents that equity issue if you're – not if you're doing these activities there's a nothing wrong with them but you kind of have to start thinking about like what is that child going to say like when they're like nothing I stayed at home like are they going to feel okay are they going to feel comfortable I've known students who kind of almost make up things about what they did in the summer yeah, yeah. Say, it sucks like no offense yeah. but it sucks if I stayed home and everybody else got to go somewhere yes. cool and I love that you mentioned that because it is such an easy question to ask like what did you do this summer you know mm -hmm. um and then as I was reading it I was like oh man like there's definitely times where I didn't travel and then I thought back to again like my first my first year's teaching I, I would ask this question you know like or winter break or spring break or things like mm -hmm. that and I would actually have a student who, like, 
like I kind of laugh at it now, like in the spring break, he said he went to like Lake Tahoe and Disneyland and all these places that are very far apart that would be kind of yeah. hard to manage in one day. And I eventually like asked his sibling and his older sister was like, like, no, we, we didn't do any of that. And I was like, man, like I almost put it back on me. Like it almost wasn't fair that I asked that because yeah. he's going to feel left out. I feel left out if everyone else is going to really cool places and I'm stuck at home. Yeah. So I think that's a good idea. I love that you got that idea of like, instead of doing what did you do over the summer of what makes you unique yeah. and it can almost start getting students to think of like, okay, what, what makes me unique is going to be awesome for the class this year. Um, so I love that. I love that. Yeah. Idea. Love yeah. that book already. Um, and I liked the part I kind of read, um, when I read that sentence about kind of where, when we share our story, we're finding ways to bridge our like find connections like even though it's about being unique you're finding things that are still similar about you like um in the end one of the little boys says like oh that's like this and this and that so even when you think you're kind of being unique like you're still gonna find some similarities with others and I like that idea of um these stories are gonna help us understand each other a little mm -hmm. bit and I think that's part of like why we're kind of even doing this because these stories are maybe different from what we read but like we're finding things that are in common we're learning and i, and I love that idea yeah, um, yeah. and that's kind of why books are important you know we get to understand one another yeah no i like that um kind of on this idea of what gets for us to get to understand each other brings me to my book that i would read in the first week of school I'm so excited um, <laughs> it's it's a book that probably i would say 90 percent of everyone has been experienced or exposed to one in their life um, and it's The Giving Tree. Um, this book is like very dear to my heart. And I feel like this book can be interpreted so many different ways. Mm -hmm. It could just be interpreted like if you look at the tree, like the tree so selflessly gives and gives and gives. And even when she has nothing else, she's still there for the little boy. And it could, it could be one that you leave students to kind of interpret on their own. Like, what do you think means? And it kind of almost like, there could be a lot of activities in one of like being that kind of goes on along with what makes you unique is kind of like what do you give uh, and I really like that idea of yeah. what do you give and what do others give to you because I think sometimes we almost see as gift giving as like material possessions but you don't realize like you give love you give kindness you give smiles like little things like that so it's yeah. like I want my I want my students, so I love reading this in the first week of school, to kind of give my students that mindset of what do you give to others? Are you there to lend a hand? Are you there to offer someone a shoulder to cry on? Are you there to give hugs if someone needs one? Are you there to give kindness? All this stuff. And it's like, what also uh, do people give to you? Because again, people, I think when they think of giving, they think of materialistic things. And it's like, no, sometimes giving is someone giving you the time or like listening to you or giving you like I guess giving you time and so it's like a that's a very like good idea to kind of almost like do an inventory of what your students like bring not necessarily bring to the table but what they like what the, your, com your classroom community is going to look like if you kind of get that idea of like oh I give kindness I mm -hmm. I'm here to lend a hand like lend a hand if my classmate needs it and to kind of get that mentality of, like this is a community where we just give to each other and also kind of gives like, this this idea of like sometimes you will give and no people won't give back yeah I, it's kind of funny sorry um oh, you're good. I think it's wait as you were saying it I don't know if you read like relationship wise like the whole love language thing I was yes I have read that book <laughs> I haven't read it, but I mean, I've read blurbs and stuff, but I was just thinking like, you kind of have to learn the love language of your class. Yes. That, it's like exactly what you were saying. Like, cause, um, some students are, some students like, for example, like I'm super competitive. So like, if you give me a challenge, like I'm going to work really hard while other students really need that like encouragement of like, all right, you're doing a great job. Like keep doing this and that. And I think that would be such a good way to like, kind of figure out everyone's love language for your class um, and just figuring out like what they feel like they need yeah. back and like what they're willing to give to the class as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's, I, I've read the five love languages book and I, I honestly like love it because I think that it has really kind of almost made me reflect on who I am as an individual and what I need to kind of 
almost get the validation to get mm -hmm. the to feel love so there's this idea in the um love languages book about a love tank and so it's like you never want your love tank to be empty and so it's like what yeah. you need to fill it and so i love that you brought that up because it kind of almost gives us this idea of like who your students are what what do your students need and then others can get to know them and you get to know them and together just decide uh what it i guess like what is going to make this a community so yeah, yeah you're no. building up i mean you're building a family relationship yes. where you want your students to feel safe and i think yes. Being able to talk about this is so important, especially for the first week of school. So um, I love that you mentioned that. I mean, I know when you mentioned the, uh, the book, you were kind of hesitant. You're like, is it good? And now that you like talked about it, I'm like, now I want to read it for the first <laughs> week because I want to do this activity. Yeah. I know my class is love language and like what's going to make all of us happy and healthy. Um, I love it. Yeah, no, it's so it's always, it's a good one to always have. Um, I know that other people do different activities with it. Um, you can even do like an environmental activity about how the tree keeps giving and giving and it's like eventually like the tree gets cut down. So it kind of makes you think of yeah. environmental. Um, but then I always feel like with environmental issues, like there's different ways to approach it. Me personally, so like, this wouldn't be a book for it. Um, but yeah, no, this is one of my favorites. Uh, and it's probably one that I will continue reading <laughs> no, for I'm a very, very long, long time. And I think, and I'm, nice, sorry, to like, because you were saying like, it, it is such a classic book, but I never would have thought about it in that perspective of like, yes. what are your students going to give to the class, you know? Yes. Um, so I love that. And I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to do this activity. Yeah. And then I've also seen um, where teachers do this activity, they have their own like tree cut out mm -hmm. and like students kind of like, almost like paste the leaves or apples. Mm -hmm. And they talk about like things that like they give or like how uh, they receive like or things that they receive and it's almost like you make your own classroom giving tree and yeah. so you can always look back and be like like this is who my students are so it's like another way of doing like a student inventory at the beginning of the year without always doing like the questionnaires or anything like that yeah so. and it's like fun like they're yes. gonna love being able to write on a leaf and like yeah. it'll be great decoration for parents to come and see yeah yeah no exactly um yeah so i guess that's all our books this this week wow yeah, that was no, quick I was thinking I was because now with everything being digital it'd be kind of nice to even do that idea like online I don't know if you've seen um all these bitmoji classrooms like you could even do like a tree and have students okay. write on it like write on it and like put the leaves still around like it, you could yeah. still do this online like I'm just trying to think of like how because I want to do this activity and like I want to make it fun for them and yeah. I've always been somebody who like I like to include art stuff like I'm not an artist but I think it's a lot of fun to see the kids being creative and I love that yeah, yeah no that's awesome um yeah no now I have to think about digital activities because it's coming up quick and a lot of things so yeah too many suggestions yes um, definitely let us know how yes what you're going to do for the first week of school, especially online, or um, I know we were mentioning like how we even do read alouds. Um, what apps do you guys use? How are you doing your read alouds? Mm -hmm. I know that some teachers are pre-recording them and then having them already on there. Um, when I was still in my student teaching placement, going back to how we did read alouds, we read Wonder to the book, to the students. Yeah. And then between my two mentor teachers and myself, we each read like a couple couple chapters and uh -huh. we recorded them and then posted the YouTube links and so students can go back there and like re-watch Wonder and just um, yeah. really get to like see everything or really get to hear it and so it's it's like if a student doesn't have a book they also don't like miss out on like the actual having to have a book they can just listen so we like that idea too. Yeah I definitely yeah. like that idea and being able to go back and the students can kind of read it on their time as well yes. um, so I love that. Yeah. So that was our first kind of episode where we're really reviewing some books that we really enjoy. Um, and I was now to, more nervous this episode than last episode. <laughs> I think it's because we know our stories very well. And now we're actually like diving into books, which is something that's like very, like, very personal to us. Because it's like, no. like the books we review, I feel like it's like a little glimpse of who we are as an yeah. individual. Um, so yeah, it's, it could be a little nerve wracking. I did um, forget, sorry, I did forget oh about the whole diverse, um, diversity. So the character in The Day You Begin is, um, she's I don't know would you say like brown skin tone um and she has like beautiful curly hair yeah um so I, I liked that part about it as well and like a lot of the students in the book for example we have 
um, students who just look different. We have yes. three characters and there's two girls and a boy and they're each different hair color, different skin color. Um, and I liked that as well. And the images are just beautiful, um, super colorful. I'm like somebody who, when I pick up a book, I like to look at the images first because mm -hmm. sometimes that's what's gonna attract students um, as well. Um, so there's some diversity too in this book. Um, because I know that's a big thing we were kind of pushing for and we want to push for. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think even our activities are kind of about the diversity and just how we're different and the same, so. Yes, yeah, no. Um, so I think that is our time for this for this episode. Just to kind of give a little preview of what we're doing um, next week. Next week we're gonna do, which is probably one that's gonna be really fun for us, uh, is our personal, our current favorite. So what we're trying to do is each month, go ahead and do an episode of, or like, not necessarily an episode, but at least every once in a while, maybe insert it in an episode, our current favorites, because um, there's so many. Like, literally, Alejandra and I sit there and be like, I love this book, I love this book, I love that book. <laughs> I, think I almost want it to be like, what book am I obsessed with at the yes. moment? Because I love all books, but like, this is the book I'm obsessed with. This is the book I've been recommending to everybody. I actually sent my book to you. I sent it to Sarah. I've sent it to multiple people because yes. I'm so excited. Yeah, her, Alejandra will tell you about the book, but the book is amazing. I just received mine today. Um, she sent it to me, and it is very heartwarming and just she can tell you all, all about That'll it. That'll be for the next. For yes, our for our next episode. <laughs> yeah, and then mine is one that I discovered um, just going through Amazon. Because you know when you, like, find a book on Amazon, yeah. you end up just, like, it tells you, like, oh, others have bought this book. And so I saw it, and it's this beautiful story, which I will tell next week as well. Yes, and it's, it. Yeah, it's a, in the artwork. I can't wait to show you the, like, mm -hmm. illustrations on it. They're just gorgeous. But, um, yeah, no, keep commenting on our post. I know that a couple of you really, uh, com or a couple, a couple of our listeners and followers commented on the post about the book you were reading. Yes, yeah. 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 What, what are you reading? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, um, definitely follow us. We're super active on um, Instagram, which is uh, the underscore book boat. Mm -hmm. um, we post there. We're going to start posting a lot more often once our episodes yes. start going live. Um, but we're both there. I get the notifications all the time and I'm super excited when people message us. So message us, comment. Um, again, let us know what book you guys are going to read for mm -hmm. your first week of school. Um, what are some of the activities you're going to do with your students? Are you guys going to be uh, distance learning or in person? Um, what, what's going on? We want to yeah, know. Exactly. We want to know because maybe you guys can inspire us and we yeah. might be bringing in your books into our first week and let us know the activities and we would love to see pictures too if you're like these if you're having if you're creating a tree or any of these activities like yes. if you can post pictures that of that so I think that would be so fun cool. yeah. yeah send it to us for sure I want to see all the, our giving trees yes or anything why are you unique posters I'm excited yes. yeah me too okay that's gonna be all for today all right um Thank you for listening. Uh, please comment, subscribe. Yes. We're trying to get on all podcast platforms. Um, so we're share. Quite, yeah, share. Tell your teacher friends. Tell your parents. <laughs> yes. Um, so have a first week of school if you haven't. I hope you did have a first week, great first week of school. If you've already had your first week, um, we're going to get through this year. Yes. We're going to get through it. It's going to look different, but we definitely are getting through it. Yeah. Thank okay. you. No problem. Bye, everyone. Bye.